ウランナイトの諸君ガッチンせよ Some time ago, I talked about the fantastic Gao Gai Gar and how it embraced the Gatai sequences and the Monster of the Week format to deliver a super interesting and wholesome experience. Considering that I'm not a super robot expert, I asked for a few more recommendations and you kindly answered with a lot of options. The one that appeared the most was Gravion, one of the most well known works of the legendary Masami Obari. And here's the thing, I watched the first season and its story felt, well, too generic. Then I saw the second season and sure, things get a little bit more nuanced, but more importantly, things get answered. Now, here's the other thing, I absolutely love the style. I mean, this is a textbook case of style over substance, and that's perfectly okay with o b a d When I started the research for Gravion, I took a look at Ovari's trajectory and wow, he has a lot of anime credits under his belt, from the super classic Dankuga to even Hentai. And the best thing is that it doesn't matter if he's doing a licensed show or a robot series or even an adult anime, he has his tropes and he will use them. Oh, and if you're like me who didn't know who Ovari was, don't worry, you definitely know about the Ovari pose or brave perspective. Surely you have seen that pose in a robot anime. Anyway, as I was watching Gravion, I also remembered a piece of advice that a pal gave me a long time ago. I don't remember the year, but Dragon Ball Super just announced the second movie, the one with Golden Frieza. When I saw it, I was like, another transformation? And now with blue hair? We have yellow, red, and now blue? Come on, Toriyama is now just playing with us. I was very annoyed by the Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan transformation as I felt it was super repetitive and not at all interesting. But very wisely, my pal just said, hey, remember that this is Dragon Ball Z. What were you expecting? And that exact phrase has stuck with me ever since. What were you expecting? So with that in mind, let me tell you that Gravion is a very charming show. Particularly the second season. It won't blow your mind like other shows, I mean, it's no Sera Gundam, nor it's as memorable as Gao Gai Gar, yet it has style, a lot of it. If Five Star Stories is overly ambitious with its scope and world building, with the mecha action happening only in the background, Gravian is the absolute opposite. We barely get to know the world aside from the places where the s e r a v i r e attack, yet, Every character looks amazing and the titular mecha, God Gravion, looks brutal. I love how it moves, particularly how it poses, and also the light work is amazing. Ever since I saw that silhouetted pose with the glowing eyes and the shadowed body, oh my friends, I've been desperately trying to copy that look with my Gumpla photography. Anyway, I'm Absa, and let's talk about Gravion and the sequel Gravion z w i With a little dose of Obari strobes. And as usual, Gravion spoilers ahead. The premise for Gravion is super simple. An alien species called the Seravire are invading Earth, and the military forces of every nation are unable to stop it. Good thing is that from a castle beyond the forest, Mr. Klein Sandman is able to launch the Grand Divas along with the Grand Kaiser to form Gravion. And with its full gravity power, Gravion is able to stop the Cerebrum. That's more or less all that Gravion has going on for it. I mean, sure, there are a couple of other subplots, like the one of the main characters looking for his sister, the Earth Federation Alliance, the mysterious castle s in Germain, and its prohibited zones. But they mostly go nowhere, at least on the first season. Now, I am no Ovari expert nor pretend to be one, but by 2002, the year that Gravion aired, 
he already had worked in a lot of a lot of anime either as a director or as a mechanical designer or even both so he probably was well regarded as a creator the reason i say this is because i believe that gravion was entirely done just so Vary could flex his mecha muscles at the beginning of the millennium Ovari was working on angel blade and just recently finished other works his last purely mecha work was Brave Police J. Decker and to some extent Magic Knight Rayard, but that was more or less seven years before. So, and this is me just speculating, wanting to return triumphantly to the mecha genre, Obari teamed up with Gonzo Studio and legendary mechanical designer Kunio Okawara to do a fun series. That was probably the only premise, to have forget about all of the existential dread that the mecha genre had in the previous decade and return to the more fun, lighthearted and epic stories of the old days, just like Gao Gai Gar. Again, this is just my way of interpreting this story since it really doesn't add anything new to the genre. It's just action with epic poses and fan service, which I'm totally okay with. Now, I did say that Gravion was designed mainly by Okawara Yet, it was Ovari who redesigned it to look, well, cooler. Gone are the bulky and blocky parts and instead we have a much more human physique with narrow waist and very broad shoulders, with bigger legs that overall make the figure look much more imposing. In my book, and maybe it has something to do with the western ideal male body, but I'm not going down that rabbit hole, his version of Gravion looks much better than Okawara's. Obari may not be the original creator, but his redesign definitely adds much more personality and heroism to the super robot. And that's a very common trope with Obari, him redesigning the titular mecha for it to look cooler. More powerful, if I may say so. Now, in order to keep flexing the mecha action muscles of the animators, there's a very interesting in-story justification for Gravion to keep changing the combat strategy. The aliens, the Cerevire, are constantly evolving and learning, so each new monster has adapted to the previous weapon that destroyed its predecessor. This means that even though it's the same Monster of the Week format, the finishing move for each new monster is completely different. So, story-wise, well, this really adds absolutely nothing. Yet, style-wise, oh yeah, you can bet that each new weapon is more bombastic than the previous one. Right to the final one, the White Steel Fang, a super big sword that looks amazing. I don't think that I mentioned it on the Gao Gai Gar video, but with the King of Braves, I did miss the swords. Curiously, Gao Gai Gar didn't use swords, but something much more bizarre, a giant hammer. But I already raved a lot about the King of Braves in its video, so go check it out if you want to know more about Gao Gai Gar. Anyway, what can I say? I'm a simple man. I see giant robots and big swords, and I'm going to like it. Suffice to say that here in Gravion there is no shortage of swords. And you know what else there's no shortage of? Fan service. Gravion has a lot of fan service, both for males and for females. Mostly males, but you get the point. Every character is super beautiful, especially Sandman. He's right there with Paptimus Siriroko and Aphrodite Pisces as the most gorgeous non-protagonist males ever. On the other hand, there are a lot of females, from the super thick Mizuki to the almost lolly looking Lily and Luna. If you don't like fan service, well, you probably will get annoyed very quickly by the various situations that lead to a wardrobe malfunction or excessive cleavage. But I didn't mind. I quite liked fan service. I mean, of course that I watch all of High School DxD for the plot. Anyway, this is another of Ovaris' common cliches, the use of fan service in his works. In fact, a downright exact copy of Mizuki Tachibana appears in another of Ovaris' works, but in a much more adult fashion. I'm talking about Hasuki Tachibana of Angel's Blade fame. But yeah, it's almost as if when Ovari liked a female character design, he would then go on and direct a hentai series with a version of said character. And I don't say this as something bad, it's something I find quite interesting and unique. 
Anyway, not much really happens in the first season and a lot of questions remain open. Good thing that the second season really doubles down on the story, to a certain point. Again, nothing groundbreaking nor super profound. The big reveal is that the Seravire re-emerge even after being defeated with the ultimate weapon, the White Steel Fang. The reason for this is, well, it's a little bit convoluted, but it's more or less believable and it does clear up some points of the story. It involves human-like aliens from ancient civilizations and other world planets, a mistake with robots and AIs, humanity's capacity to withstand gravity, and the big reveal that Gravion is version 2 of a millennia-old prototype. This is actually a super interesting thing that was always right there in your face. You see, the opening is telling that story. Up until the final episodes, I really didn't understand where that fight was going to happen. But the truth of the matter is that that battle had already happened. That Gravion is the original prototype Gravion that was defeated and lost one eye. Now, this reveal works twofold. First, by having another robot toy to sell, but in story, it means that there's a lot of upgrades to the Gravion Super Robot, along with a few other surprises that I won't spoil. Well, you know what? I will spoil it, not entirely. I only focus on what happens, not why or how. So yeah, mega spoiler territory in 3, 2, 1. By the end of the show, both Sol Gravion and the prototype Sigma Gravion are not able to stop the Cerevire. So this being a super robot show, the only way to destroy the threat is by combining both the Gravions into the super ridiculously big and bulky Ultimate Gravion. It's borderline stupid and totally impractical and I really dislike the design, but I absolutely love the idea. I mean, of course, that by combining the mechanical bodies, you exponentially increase the strength and you'll be able to lift the stupidly big sword. Of course, it's right there on the Super Robot Show Logic Manual. And with that ultra bombastic Gatai and the ridiculously humongous sword, Gravion is able to finally destroy the Cerebrae. Ultimate Gravion, to be exact. All in all, Gravion is a super easy-going show that's full of spectacle and great poses, human and robot alike. I still don't know who poses better, Sandman or Gravion. After I switched off my brain, when I stopped questioning everything, I really enjoyed the show. It's probably one of the most stylish super robot shows and maybe Obari's greatest modern anime that doesn't belong to a franchise, since these days he's mostly working on Gundam related things, or such is my impression. Then again, I may be exaggerating since I don't know much of his career. But you know, I was definitely super impressed by his style and Gravion opened a big kind of worms regarding his anime works. I'm now very interested in checking out more of his shows, from the original Dan Kuga and maybe its newer version, all the way to his hentais. So while Gravion didn't do much for me, it actually introduced me to the wonderful world of Ovari with his robots and his tropes. So my friends, thank you very much for recommending this anime. Gravion was definitely a weird ride. I tried to talk a little bit about the background information and not so much on the story since, well, you know, I don't really like to summarize the stories. The thing is that even though it is a successful series, there is not a lot of information regarding its creation, or at least that I could find, so if you know more about it, please leave it in the comments. As for why I didn't go so in-depth on the mechanical design or wild reinterpretations of the tropes, well, first, I just didn't feel like it. Gravion is probably not supposed to be deep. I just think that it's better to just leave it like that, a fun and simple show. And I really think that it works better that way. Anyway, have you seen Gravion? And if so, what are your thoughts about it? Also, what other Ovari shows do you recommend? Please. Leave them in the comments, and as you may or may not know, my name is Absa, and you can continue the conversation over at Twitter, where you can follow me at Absalonicas, and on Instagram, where I post pictures of my figures, my cats, and sometimes even myself. 
I'll be trying to talk more about anime, maybe comics, and definitely more mechanical design via model kits, and maybe some chalkings. Until next time, always remember that in fiction lies power, so let's use it to forge a new type of story, our hero's journey.